The Chesapeake Bay is a national treasure. It was formed 15,000 years ago when an immense glacier melted and flooded an ancient river valley. The estuary today is where the Potomac and 150 other rivers, streams and creeks merge on their way to the Atlantic Ocean. The watershed stretches through six states in the nation's capital, nourishing a multitude of land and marine species. It's also the source of fresh drinking water, food, and recreation for 17 million people. But the health of America's largest estuary is poor, according to the annual report by the Chesapeake Bay Program, a federal-state partnership. Program director Jeffrey Lape says indicators such as water quality and wildlife habitat tell how poor it is. From an ecosystem standpoint, we have 13 measures. We've rolled them up into a single index, which on a scale of 100, using 100 as a restored bay, the bay health is at about a scale of 38. This did not happen overnight. Industrial growth, a population boom, air pollution, and fertilizer runoff from farms and lawns are to blame. Nutrients flow into the bay, promote algae, which decompose and use up oxygen in the water. Beth McGee is a water quality expert with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. She says the nutrient overload, largely nitrogen and phosphorus, is sucking life from the bay. What we've seen um, over the last several decades is that we have this huge dead zone in the summertime, which is basically a huge amount of the bay that's off limits to aquatic life. John Freeman has watched these changes over his lifetime. A waterman by trade, he's trapped crabs near his home in Newport News, Virginia for 66 years, just like his father before him. Right now it's awful. It's awful water. Not good. Blue crabs native to these waters have declined by 70% over the last 15 years. Despite new restrictions on fishing, crabs have not rebounded, and watermen are turning to other jobs. Howard Ernst lives on a creek near the Maryland state capitol. He says people in the watershed must be careful where they fish and swim because of the pollution, especially after it rains and runoff flows into the waters that feed the bay. You can fish, but you'd have to follow all the state fish advisories for mercury, uh, and there are plenty of those. Uh, you can crab here, uh, but the primary concern is, is swimming in the water after rain events. Ernst is a professor of political science at the U.S. Naval Academy. In his new book, Fight for the Bay, he says, failed policies explain why recovery has proceeded so slowly. Pollution doesn't kill the Chesapeake Bay. What kills it is politics that allows pollution to go on unabated uh, in a way that the bay can't handle. Whether it's agriculture, whether it's steel mills, whether it's air pollution, it's in their economic best interest to dispose of their waste in public spaces like the bay. Advocates for bay cleanup are calling for new regulations and enforcement of rules already on the books. Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Lisa Jackson says a preliminary report in response to the president's executive order outlines a tougher stand against polluters of the bay. It's not to say that the federal government acting alone could see the cleanup happen, but we have to show that leadership and we also have to show the willingness to enforce uh, with states, with uh, different sectors if necessary. A strategy for bay cleanup is expected to be finalized by May 2010. Roseanne Skirbel, VOA News, Washington.